We met in 2007 through a mutual friend and I was texting this mutual friend at the time and she had Molly over for a sleepover. We, we texted for a long time yeah. and we would stay up to like 3 a.m. texting each other, sometimes overnight. We actually never hung out until after I moved away, right? right? Yeah. So then I moved in 2009 mm -hmm. and we kept texting. So after I moved away, we talked all the time and because I still had friends in Illinois, I would go visit. Mm -hmm. Well, I would go visit my friends, but I just really wanted to see you. Yeah. <laughs> so I would go stay with my friends, and then we would hang out while I was there. And one time when I was there, he decided to pop a little kiss on me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so this is seventh grade. You were my first kiss in seventh grade. And I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want my parents to know. I didn't want to be like, hey, Mom. I'm going to Illinois, I kissed a boy. I shouldn't have even known what kissing was in seventh grade, no, so. <laughs> she would have thrown you into the storm cellar. She would have, and she wouldn't have let me go back. All those years when I was in Tennessee and you were in Illinois, like, we wanted to be together, but we were so young that it didn't seem, I don't know, right. plausible. I mean, I got my license and I had to start paying for gas and had to get a job, and I didn't get help. Well, did, we were so young, it didn't seem realistic. I wasn't like, oh, one day we could right. be so, together and make it work. Right. I just didn't think the long distance relationship could work. Yeah. So I decided to try to move on and. Well, I guess right, right close after the time that he got a girlfriend, I got a boyfriend because I was like, well, I guess if we can't be together, then I'll find somebody too. Right. So throughout, you were in your relationship for what? six and a half years. Mm. I was in mine for five and between all that time was college, you got a job, you and were working too. I was working and, and I was in sports, you were in were you cheerleading? Yeah, something cheerleading in high cheer, cheer, cap, <laughs> cheer captain, but it's fine. Yeah, you're playing soccer too. <laughs> yeah. So I mean we were just busy. We didn't mm -hmm. have time to mm -hmm. make three and a half hour trips. Right. We didn't really talk much after you got a girlfriend. No, because I was trying to be loyal. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't talk to you much at all. We would talk every once in a while, like... Just to, like, catch up. Yeah. Or... Throughout the time that you had a girlfriend and I was dating somebody else, we would, like, check in yeah. and talk and catch up every once in a while, but it would, like, just kind of fizzle off. And then... I guess there's a period before we reconnected. So I guess from like 2017 to 2019, we didn't talk at all. Mm -hmm. Because... Well, because <laughs> I got engaged. He did get engaged. He ghosted me for two years. I, tr I tried to yeah. reach out to him. I would just text him and be like, what's up? Happy birthday. How's life going? And then I finally caught on and I met was like... Met your brother's girlfriend at a bar. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I met your brother's girlfriend. I was in town, never heard back really anything, so I kind of gave up. I knew he was engaged, so I was like, you know what, it's just not meant to be, I guess. He found his person. Well, 2019, the engagement fell apart, mm -hmm. and just one summer day, I reached out to Molly just to finally get back to her after all these years. I looked at my phone, and it was said, Braden Reeves added you on Snapchat, mm -hmm. and I literally was like, what? And I was like, I just wonder what he has to say after all these years. What does he have to say? And so I accepted it. But I didn't snap you first. I waited for you to reach out to me. You did. And then you did. And I remember being like, hey, good talk. How's it been the last two years? And then, I don't know, we started talking and you were like, I'm kind of going through some stuff right now. And I was like, oh, what? And you said, me and my girlfriend, or I guess my <laughs> ex fiance broke up. And I was like, would you believe me if I said that me and my boyfriend just broke up not long ago? So we always knew if we could fix things, if we ever had the opportunity to be together, it would be like... I think that's kind of how God's laid it out for us, yeah. just to you know, finally put the perfect timing in place and for us to see each other. So once we were both single, you know, we decided just to take little leap of faith like hey you were in Knoxville at the time yeah I was in Knoxville for school so, so we were six hours apart really right. so we kind of took turns 
driving back and forth six hours to see each other. And it was never though, I, I never thought like, okay, I guess we'll see each other. I wonder how this will go. I never thought that. It was always like, it was just like when we see when each we other, see each I other. know it's how it could, I know how it's going to yeah, go. Yeah, like when we see each other, it's game over. Right. And so, you know, we saw each other for the first weekend and just. It was perfect. It was perfect. We played Mario, <laughs> played a lot of video games, yeah, watched we, movies, cooked. Kissed. Kissed. <laughs> <laughs> danced in the kitchen a lot. We did. And then it was after that first weekend, we both were bawling our eyes. <laughs> I was bawling like a little baby. Bawling our leave. eyes out when we had to leave because we were like, it was like a taste of what, what we've always wanted, like a right. little perfect weekend, and then we weren't really sure of what. So then we spent a lot of the next, I don't even know, two months driving back and forth. I know we spent like, what was it, eight or nine weekends straight? Oh my gosh, something like that from like August or September on, I guess. Driving like, he would drive five and a half hours yeah. just to see me for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And then I get, I'm trying to think about what, I'm trying to think of what month it was that we started talking and being like, okay, I want to be married by the end of this year. I'm trying, the, um, first, week, the first weekend maybe? <laughs> yeah, probably after the first weekend. <laughs> probably after our first time being reunited. Yeah. No, I'm trying to think, probably I would say like Christmas time. Yeah. Realistic. I mean, I knew, but I feel like we started really, really talking about it like November, December. Mm -hmm. We just knew, and so we both were like, I don't want to, like, I want to be married by the end of 2020. 2020. Like, there's no point in waiting. Like, I've been waiting right. for I mean, you we for just, all those years. Right. And we just knew what we wanted, so it was just like, yeah. if you know what you want, then why wait? If you know what you want, then why wait? Your cousin <laughs> was set to get married in April in South Carolina. Yeah. And so, we were going to stay a day or two in South Carolina afterwards, mm -hmm. and I had found a spot to propose. Well, and then coronavirus came around and started shutting every single state down and all the state parks and literally everything you can think of. And so we had to improvise. I'm running out of options. So I got my brother and his girlfriend in on it. And so I had made them fake like their car broke down next to a, uh, a fountain in a body of water. In Marion, Illinois. Yeah, in Marion, Illinois, which is... So where, where our whole thing began, so we kind of just went right. full circle. So, in my mind, I thought he was going to propose like in February, and then I thought he was going to propose at the beginning of March, and then nothing was coming, so I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be like July. <laughs> so, I thought maybe you might in St. Louis, but then when... COVID canceled all pl our plans. I was like, he's not gonna propose to me married in Illinois. Right. Like, there's nowhere to go. You remember what you told your mom? Yeah, so I saw my mom that day and I was like, I got my nails done for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got my nails done. I wasted money on dip powder, like whatever. So because Corona hit, that whole week we had just been laying low. Like I don't think I had put on makeup or got out of my pajamas yeah. the whole week. So it got to Saturday. And since we didn't get to go to St. Louis, I thought you were just being sweet, which you were being sweet. And you were like, how about we put on some clothes and go get some food and just have like, make some food and just have a little date at home since we mm -hmm. can't go out. So I thought that was normal. I was like, huh, he's trying to be sweet since we can't go to St. Louis. Right. So I was like, okay. So that was his way to get me out of my looking like Smeagol because I literally had on sweats and a t-shirt. So we got ready, and then we had to make, run an errand for some reason, and maybe go get food or something, I don't remember. And while we're there, he was like, hey, Logan, which is your brother, his girlfriend's car broke down, we gotta go jump him. So then we pull up to the, whatever, the, that area, the pavilion, mm -hmm. and there's like some land and a fountain. And their, their, the hoods are popped, so I'm like, okay, I guess we're just gonna jump their cars off. And then, you had me grab the jumper cables while you grabbed the ring, I guess. Yep. And then we were kind of just standing there for a minute. He was like, come over here for a minute. And then you took me over there to the pond yeah. or whatever it was. And then that's when I was like, I think it's happening. <laughs> but he got down on one knee and opened the ring box and I was like, what? So everything since the beginning, I guess, of us reconnecting has just been like, I don't Perfect. want to be corny and say a fairy tale, but... I mean, 
this this is what we wanted since we're back in fifth, fifth and fourth grade, so. 